Happy Monday, everyone. I... All right, settle. <laughs> Still the weekend for some of these people. <laughs> I hope you had a decent weekend, but not too decent, if you know what I mean. Good to see Bill Hemmer's with us, huh? Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, thanks for having me over. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> that is not photoshopped. All right, so for the left to maintain their often unfortunate beliefs, they have to assume the very worst about the people they claim to defend. Remember, it's the party that told you blacks can't get IDs. But also the poor, you know that they steal, right? Yes, that's what we always hear at NYC. That and gunshots. But whenever goods are stolen, a Democrat will say, it's because the people stealing can't afford to buy them. Even though the thieves sell the stolen crap immediately after it's grabbed. Remember when the looting took off after the bail reforms with people stealing baby formula and diapers, AOC was saying it's because the poor needed this stuff. But if anybody needs a diaper, it's her. Because <laughs> she's so full of uh, crap. <laughs> mm, see, I'm growing up. Of course, most poor people do not steal. How much money you have has nothing to do with how honest you are. The problem here in New York is clear. Stealing is simply incentivized, so the already criminalized simply get more criminally. And I invented that word, criminally. It's not like poor, decent people just embarked on a life of crime because Walgreens got lazy. No, we, or our liberal DAs, just made recidivism acceptable for the riffraff. Take New York's infamous serial thief who led the league in shoplifting busts with 46 arrests. Four more and he gets a free toaster. <laughs> Which is weird because he already stole seven. <laughs> now, was it his poverty that drove him? Nah, I'm guessing he drove himself, probably in a stolen Lexus. But did he use the products he stole like every Democrat claimed these impoverished souls would? No, he'd pill for drugstores, then flip the booty for cash. I know this for a fact because I bought 12 men in speed sticks off him. <laughs> what can I say? Have you ever dipped them in ranch dressing? Oh my God. <laughs> They're delicious. The New York Post, owned by our parent company, Life Alert, <laughs> interviewed the guy. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and he said everything that you knew to be true. He kept robbing only because he could keep robbing, thanks to the soft-on-crime prosecutors. He robbed Walgreens so often, he'd bring in his own reusable bag. <laughs> and I don't blame him. If he actually did pay for the goods, imagine the length of his receipts. <laughs> Those are long from all this. I don't understand it either. Isaac Rodriguez robbed one Walgreens at least 37 times last year. This guy was on camera more than Kill has been in the last two years. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be actually subbing for Kill Mead on Fox and Friends <laughs> weekends. You can move that down. No, that's stupid. But he stole everything from protein drinks to body lotion, which when you mix together makes a delicious yogurt. He also stole toothpaste, soap, and tampons. Yes, tampons. Now, this might have tipped some off that this wasn't for Isaac's personal use. But then again, men can now have babies, so why not periods? <laughs> he then sell the stolen stuff on the street or in pawn shops for cash. And he kept going, not because he had to feed a family. It was due to the revolving door justice system that kept him in business while putting stores out of business. Remember, this new craze was brought to you by reforms that got rid of pretrial detention, cash bail for misdemeanors and nonviolent felonies, which includes grand larceny. This is why criminals like this dude could be caught over and over, only to be released like a lake trout on a fishing show. Meanwhile, if you wandered through an open door at the Capitol, you might still be in jail six months later. If only they'd attacked the White House with BLM, those lawbreakers would be home right now. But... 2022, petty and grand larcenies are up 42 and 51 percent, respectively, compared to the last, same time last year. And in the precinct where Rodriguez did most of his shoplifting, grand, grand larcenies were up 99 percent. That's almost double. <laughs> Thank you. Even Janet Yellen could figure that out. <laughs> Isaac boasted, I may have got caught 46 times, but I got away a lot more than yeah. that. Uh, but he finally got nailed for ripping off a store where there was already an order of protection against him. 
And that's the amazing part, really, that you actually have to get a letter from a court in advance in order for them to stop a criminal. How insane is that? But this is how incentives and disincentives work. The left incentivized criminal behavior with zero deterrence. Criminals reacted exactly as you'd expect. So you, can you blame the thieves? Apparently, we're no longer allowed to, and maybe that's how it goes. And you wonder what even happens when the cops decide to interrogate these perps. Okay, Deborah, I'll keep this brief. We've caught you 35 <laughs> times stealing this week. But it wasn't me, though. We have you on tape. Look, here's a picture of you stealing ties from J.C. Penney. Oh that looks nothing like me. This looks exactly like you. We also caught you on camera stealing a monkey head from the National History Museum. I would never wear that. You're wearing the same thing right now. You're wearing the same thing. We also caught you stealing a male model from the International House of Male Models. He hit on me. <laughs> now that's the biggest lie I ever heard. You expect me to believe that? Hey, baby. You ready to get out of here? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'll be damned. <laughs> they make a beautiful couple. So, the question is, with all this stealing going unarrested, is that a word? <laughs> Why are we paying for things? Are we the suckers or what? In this new world, you'd be stupid not to steal. Like, you'd be stupid to pay your student loans back. <laughs> I mean, how's that not wholesale theft? It's the government reaching into your pocket to pay off someone else's debt. In that case, you're the drugstore. And the government just walked in and cleaned out the register. She looks like a stock photograph in a picture frame you buy and pretend she's your girlfriend. <laughs> Outnumbered co-host, Emily Campagna. I can't imagine how many dog pictures he has to look at every morning. <laughs> America's newsroom co-anchor, Bill Hemmer. <laughs> and this man is so bright, he gets kicked out of movie theaters. <laughs> Founder of Strive Asset Management, or Sam, and best selling author of the book Woke Inc., Vivek Ramaswamy. <laughs> and she's like a Sour Patch kid, sweet on the inside and often found stuck to the theater floor. <laughs> Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. <laughs> Great to see you. You had a nice 10-day well. break from dog pictures. <laughs> Dan is back. Oh, they're still online, Greg. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. She was sending them. I told everybody that she was suspended from Fox. So I heard. <laughs> You should have been well. for the, that thing she did, Bill. <laughs> Are you getting tired of hearing? Isn't it weird how we do this story over and over again and nothing happens? You know, I was thinking, uh, this is kind of like uh, we're living our own little science experiment. You know, mm -hmm. back in grade school when the teachers say, hey, we've got a science fair coming up in two months. Go home and come up with a project. Well, they came up with a project, all right? All mm -hmm. right? It includes lenient sentences and no cash bail and open the border, legalize drugs, and make the streets home for the homeless. And that's just New York. I know. <laughs> um, so we're three years into this experiment. Let's call it that, okay, this science experiment. Mm -hmm. And we'll find out in November how people are gauging how it's going. Mm. What if you and I decided to go out to a drugstore and shoplift? What would happen to us? <laughs> this dude was the league leader. That I know. Was the 37 times yeah. in one shop. But do you think we'd be treated the same or differently if uh, we did it? If we went in, if we just walk out. I mean, have you ever thought about that when you're in there? Just go ahead. I haven't really considered that, Greg. But I would suggest that if they're this lenient, yeah, you could get away with. it. All right, okay. I know what I'm doing. By the way, I'm just joking. I mean, it's just a little, uh, little uh, thinking out loud. Using out loud. Just I mean, yes, Emily. Very good. Very good. Um, you're a lawyer, and you're from Washington. Did you see that people are no longer stopping? In, is it the state of Washington, right? The police are trying to. Uh, they turn the sirens on. You don't have to. 
pull over anymore. That's another incentive to keep driving. That's right. And actually, the uh, the a similar analogy to that is what's going on in the southern border, which is that the law states if you are a juvenile driver, you're sort of the law enforcement there is prevented from engaging in high speed pursuits, which is why the cartels have now enlisted juvenile dri drivers for them. So the point is, it only leads to bad news. Yes. Um, or incentivizes all of us driving fast there. Mm -hmm. I have to say, back on this league MVP. Um, mm -hmm. The irony to me is that part of the advocacy by the progressive left of not putting people like that in jail, of saying, well, incarceration is toxic, right? That, that it's, it deteriorates humanity. But what happens now that he's in jail? He has 200 days left on his sentence. He says, I'm now clean, I'm sober. He's getting his GED. See? He says, I would have died if I had stayed on the streets. He said, this is a blessing in disguise. I hope I saw that. I hope he was telling the truth because like it tells you, you have to separate the person from the life at some times. By the way, it, you can just say ged. You don't have to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the GED. <laughs> Shut up. But anyway, I, I, was, I was going, is this for real? Because then, you know, he's going to get out, Vivek. By the way, I, you know, you, you obviously book huge. You came at the right time. Woke, great book. Why are companies speaking, like you don't really hear the companies that are being victimized. Why is that? Yeah, well look, I think that they're just apologizing to the people who used to come after companies. So they'll say, you know what, you can steal a little bit from our shop as long as you get the regulators off our back. That's still a pretty good trade, right? Mm -hmm. Shop fares a little bit, corporate profits, different things. So this is a game that the companies played. But you know, I thought, I thought for a business guy, by the way, Greg, you got the incentive thing pretty right there. You give Thank people you. more incentives to commit crimes, they're gonna yes. commit more crimes. Mm -hmm. I, I do think there's one more element to this though, and I think it's I think it's pretty important actually, is that you have a philosophy behind BLM, behind clear the jails, behind uh, defund the police movements, which basically say the system is so corrupt, the system is so racist, yes. that you're actually justified when you do it. You're actually sticking it to the system. Mm -hmm. You're actually doing the right thing. And I think the reason a lot of criminals don't steal isn't just because they're gonna get put in jail, it's because they feel like they're doing something wrong. Right. But if they feel like they're the heroes and doing something right, that's what's actually going on in cities across the country is you feel like you have these heroes that are actually carrying out a justified cause. And I don't think we've been talking about that enough. That's interesting. That's yeah, it's an, almost an ideology. Because if you, if you do believe that this country is hopelessly oppressive, then doing anything to strike against it, it makes you a hero. Kat, uh, but you're like me, right? When you, you get, do you get that little tinge of envy when somebody's stealing? It's like, why am I paying? Or you get like, why am I paying for something? You're at CVS, you're buying, I don't know, ointments, whatever. <laughs> Talking about me. Yeah. I buy some, I, every now and yeah, then I gotta get an ointment. All I do is just buy ointments. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> ointments are the most underrated uh, product, oil-based product. Are they? I don't think they're under or over. I think they're just ointment. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> they're exactly right. what they are. Well, there's a pointment to my ointment, and that is, <laughs> <laughs> what is it about the rest of us? It's, it's exactly a corollary to people who paid their, their college tuition and then somebody gets it paid off. It's just like being in a, a drugstore and that guy gets to walk out with a bag because you're going to pay for it. It's going to yeah. make everything more expensive. It's, there's never been a better time to steal. Yes. Because... <laughs> you, even, you even look at this guy like he was famous for stealing. Yes. And in the past, that might have been a big problem. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> True. You wouldn't want people to know that you were the guy stealing the most stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now it doesn't matter. Like, you can honestly, it, it's a great career. There's, you know, like, you could set up a booth at the career fair. I don't. Like, I'm the guy who, I'm the guy who steals all the stuff and nobody would do anything. Yeah. yeah. You could even steal the little tent. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that guy who's making those tents is making a lot of money, right? Oh, yeah. The COVID tents now they have outside, the little tent there. Up next. <laughs> <laughs> Do writers for the Washington Post have a worse sense of humor than most? Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.